What's up, Skywatchers? What is up indeed? Saturday, December 6, 2025. The Electromagnetic Sky. The idea they never want you to even consider. Every time something strange happens in the air, planes grounded, cosmic rays spiking, GPS drifting, radiation alerts, stratospheric warming events, everyone points to the same thing. It's the sun. It's space weather. It's a distant galaxy. It's the pole shift. But here's the truth nobody touches. The fingerprints are never out there. They're always right here in our own atmosphere. And until you look at the entire system, not just the one piece, none of this will ever make sense. Because the sun alone cannot explain what we're seeing, cosmic rays alone cannot explain it, climate alone cannot explain it. But the interaction between all of these, plus the electromagnetic technology surrounding us, that's where the real picture lives. We have been trained, literally trained, to think in fragments. Look at the sun. Look at the climate change. Look at the chemtrails and the aerosols. Look at the storms. Look at the magnetic field. But that's not how the real system works. The atmosphere today is shaped by natural solar activity, ionospheric heaters, phased arrays, charged aerosol layers, NEXRAD uplinks, particle precipitation, artificial plasma structures, aviation interference, the global electric circuit, and the polar vortex, not separately, together as one system. The sun, what actually happens versus what we're told. Let's start where the official story always wants you to start, the sun. And here are the facts. The biggest flares in history make today's look tiny. Starting with the 1859 Carrington event, an X40 or an X60 plus, on November 4, 2023, we had an X-40 or an X-45. March 6, 1989, we saw an X-15. April 2, 2001, we saw an X-20. August 1989, we saw an X-20. Compare that to what caused panic recently. An X-1.2, an X-1.9, an X-2.5, and an X-5. These are mild by comparison. Now look at the reactions. Back then, no mass grounding of aircraft. No fear-based headlines, no emergency cockpit radiation sensors, no global warnings. Today, a mild flare hits, suddenly thousands of flights are grounded, airlines say they are protecting electronics, people panic like the sun is exploding, but ask yourself, why only now, why during this era? And here's the punch. If the magnetosphere were truly collapsing by 30%, these flares would have destroyed systems worldwide, but they didn't. Which means the problem isn't the sun, it's the atmosphere we've engineered. So why were 6,000 planes grounded? They blamed it on the sun, but aviation history proves otherwise. During the X-20 and X-45 solar flare events, there were no wide-scale groundings, no protected aircraft warnings, no cockpit radiation monitors, and no global aviation panic. Why? Because the sun wasn't the problem. Now what causes aircraft interference? Electromagnetic disturbances, high frequency blackout zones, GPS incoherence, radar altimeter drift, instrument timing errors, increased atmospheric conductivity, plasma layers created at altitude. These are not caused by mild solar flares, they are caused by HARP, class ionospheric heaters, ISCAT, SuperDARN, Sura, NEXRAD, Sonya, and others all operating in overlapping frequency bands. And this is why I think the planes were grounded not because of the sun, but because the airspace has become electrically unstable. And we recently saw this in Cuba. A massive bullseye-shaped atmospheric disturbance appeared over Cuba, and immediately no TAMs went up. Pilots were told to avoid the region, flights were rerouted, because the atmosphere itself became unreliable. So what is a NOTAM, and why does it matter? A NOTAM is a Notice to Air Missions, an alert issued to pilots when part of the airspace becomes hazardous. NOTAMs exist for a reason. Missile tests, military operations, instrument outages, electromagnetic interference, atmospheric instability. Every major ionospheric heater has placed NOTAMs when operating at high power. Why? Because the beams interfere with avionics, autopilot systems, GPS, high-frequency comms, magnetometers, altimeters. 
NOTAMs weren't created theoretically, they were created after a real interference event occurred, meaning aircraft were affected long before the rules were written. Now let's get into cosmic rays for a moment. This is the part everyone misunderstands. Pole shift channels say cosmic rays are increasing because the magnetosphere is collapsing, but here's the reality. Ionospheric heating changes the pathways cosmic rays take. It changes how they enter the atmosphere, and it changes where they precipitate downward. When you heat the ionosphere, you thin certain layers, create plasma turbulence, modify atmospheric conductivity, open temporary access channels, allow deeper particle penetration. This is documented in HARP research, ICAP papers, Arecibo experiments, NASA radiation belt studies. Cosmic rays didn't suddenly become stronger, the atmosphere became easier to penetrate, and that's the part no one talks about. And for a few years, I've been showing you polar vortex signatures. ISCAT heating at 85,000 feet, beam geometry sitting over the polar electrojet, sudden stratospheric warming events, vortex weakening out of season, and this is exactly what ionospheric coupling looks like. The sun didn't do that, heater operations did. The pattern repeats year after year. Heater, anomaly, vortex disruption, downstream weather chaos. People think it's climate change or the sun, but the timing always lines up with ground-based facilities. The atmosphere today contains charged aerosols, artificial plasma layers, high-frequency modified regions, particle pathways altered by beams, radar-induced ionization, global phased array networks, weakened stratospheric stability, electromagnetic noise everywhere. Natural events interact with an unnatural medium. The result? Something small can look huge. Something mild can look catastrophic. Something ordinary can look apocalyptic. Because the environment it's entering isn't natural anymore. We are living inside of an engineered electromagnetic environment, interacting with solar activity. Once you see the pattern, you can't unsee it. We are not experiencing a solar crisis, we are experiencing a technogenic atmosphere reacting to solar input. The problem isn't 93 million miles away, it's right here. Alright Skywatchers, I want you to really think about what they're preparing you for. They keep warning about catastrophic outages, solar flares knocking planes out of the sky, satellites falling, power grids failing. They want your mind fixed on one story, the sun is the threat. Space is the threat. The cosmos is the threat. But look at the evidence we just walked through. Every disruption, every grounding, every anomaly. The fingerprints aren't millions of miles away. They're right here in our own airspace, in our atmosphere, in the technology that surrounds us. And just peer-reviewed science admits ionospheric heating creates drag on satellites. They admit these beams change atmospheric density. They admit high-frequency fields alter avionics. That's not speculation, that's published. So ask yourself, why do they want you thinking about distant galaxies when the real activity is happening right above your head? Why do they point you toward the sun while these facilities run at full power on the ground? Why do they shout about space weather while the technogenic signatures line up every single time? The truth is simple. If they control the story you run to in a crisis, they control the outcome of that crisis. Look at the patterns, look at the infrastructure, and understand we are being set up to blame the sky for what technology is doing right here on Earth. A huge shout out to the supporters of this channel, Reagan James Oxenham, Denise B, S. Sparrow, and Lynn Perkins. You guys make these videos possible. Much love and many thanks. Okay, Skywatchers, stay aware. Be prepared, and until next time, keep looking up.